Hello, and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. On today's episode, I'm going to take you with me thrift shopping, where I pick up quite a few pieces that I'm going to be flipping to turn into classic, traditional style home decor with kind of a high-end flair. Thank you Cricut for sponsoring this video. If you guys have never used Cricut before, they make smart cutting machines that allow you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. It works with software called Design Space that comes free with the machine. This is where you can create your project and browse from hundreds of images and fonts. And once you've created your design, Design Space will send it to your machine to cut. It's really, really easy. And I have upgraded to the Explore 3. I used to have the Explore 2, but I have the Explore 3 now. And they also came out with this stuff that is like smart vinyl and smart iron on. And what they mean by smart is that you don't have to have a cutting mat anymore for these materials. You can just put the roll in there and it'll cut through the roll without you having to put it onto those sticky mats anymore. I'll show you that and I'll show you a bunch of other DIYs that I'm going to do later on in the video. But first, I'm gonna take you along with me as I go thrift shopping for the pieces that I want to flip. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. Just living off the edge Only good times ahead So let me put a smile upon your face Baby, make your worries go away So put your trust in Do some of these items look familiar to you? Yes, that's right. I did feature some of these items on my last video, which I will link right here in the cards. Now it's time for my favorite part, which is to show you my haul of everything that I got from the thrift stores. So the first thing that I got is this big wooden, I don't know, chest or basket. I don't know what you call it, <laughs> but it's got some funky paintings on it, a little storybook-ish, and then it also has a crackle finish. And I paid $7.99 for this. Get a good look at all these weird paintings. Some Mother Goose, I guess. And more carrots. Whoever painted it is talented. But it's got a little bit of stains on the inside. I'm gonna turn this into a toy box for my son. It's really heavy, so he won't be able to tip it over. The next thing I got was this. It's an L.L. Bean brand button-up shirt. It was $5.29. And these shirts are probably way more. I'll look it up so that I can show you exactly how much it would cost. But I intend to give it a look um, that is similar to like the Southern preppy style uh, clothing, but I'm gonna put my monogram on the pocket here to customize it. 
I like how that looks and it's way too expensive to buy them, especially in the L.L. Bean quality um, and have it done custom with your monogram on it would be really expensive. So I'm going to do a dupe of that. Next, I got this really cute lamp. The shape of it is what I love so much about it. If you look behind me, I have a bunch of ginger jars. And this, to me, looked like the shape of a ginger jar. I got it half off of $6.99. See? Sorry, the light is so bright. Well, anyways, half off of $6.99. It has a really pretty design to it. I actually don't mind this. I just wish it was blue. And it has a really pretty finial on it. And then uh, the next part, obviously, if I have a lamp, I need a lampshade. So at Goodwill now, they separate the lamp from the lampshade when they get it donated to double their money on it, I'm guessing, which really annoys me. But I got this, and it happened to also be half off. It was $4.99, so I got that for about $2.50, and the color is kind of like a champagne gold color. I usually go for more of silvers and mirrored finishes, but I'm going to mix it up with some of this gold with that lamp. Next piece is this cute little tray. It's kind of like a paper mache material and it says alcohol proof made in Japan. I wonder what alcohol proof is meant for. If you know, let me know in the comments. But it has some discoloration on there. Seems like water damage maybe. Um, I'm gonna definitely be repainting this and I'm gonna use it as a place to Either put candles or drop your mail. This would be really pretty as a place to drop your mail so you don't just have bills sitting on your counter. <laughs> Another thing I got was this plate rack. It was $7.99, which I thought was fair considering the size and the quality and the color that it was. I really like. It's already got an antiqued gold and, and black finish on it. And I think that's going to look really nice. And I wanted to make some chinoiserie style plates to go inside here. I've always wanted one of these plate racks. I don't know why I've never gotten one because you see them at Goodwill all the time. At least I do. I've come to the conclusion that my style is definitely really traditional and I'm just going to own that now. Even if it's not in style or in magazines or whatever it may be, it's my style. Another thing I got was this picture frame with a watercolor inside. It does look like it's a real watercolor. And it's signed K. Sullivan. So I'm going to actually look this up. And it was only $3.99. So I definitely need to look that up and see if K. Sullivan is maybe like, this might be like a million dollar painting. <laughs> That's the thrill of thrifting. I highly doubt it. But either way, I'm going to look it up. And I'll, if it's not super valuable, I'm going to be um, whitewashing this frame and maybe doing um, gold or silver on the bamboo. This little collection of dishes I got for $3.99. It had one more bowl in it, but I broke it. I went over a big pothole and it bounced in my trunk and it broke. But it still has these two. You can still see the missing, the broken pieces stuck in there from the one that broke. <laughs> now for that plate rack, I just picked up a few plates that were in a good shape. That <laughs> I'm not going to hang this like how it is. I like the cool iridescent look that it has to it, but the puppy and kitten have got to go. I like traditional, but that's a little, a little too kitschy for me. $1.99, $2 for one plate. Not, not, a, not a set, just a single plate with scratches all over it. Two bucks. Come on, Goodwill. But anyway. The first project that I decided to work on was this little future toy box. It has a cute little storybook, like a Mother Goose story painting on it and a signature, but it wasn't really in that great of condition. It had water damage and pieces missing from the painting, so I decided to make it match for my house as well as my son's room, which is in a really dark, beautiful navy blue. Next, I'm going to seal it with some shellac. The reason I chose shellac is because it's a really durable finish, and it's also a non-toxic finish. This is often the finish that is used for wooden toys for children. Once that is cured, I'm going to give it about 24 hours at least to cure. Then I can go over it with the decal that I'm going to get off of Design Space with Cricut. And I'm going to use their Smart Permanent Vinyl to cut this image out. And with the Smart Vinyl, like I said in the beginning, you don't need to use a cutting mat, which makes it way easier. And this little roll stand here helps so much more too. I'm just going to cut off the excess vinyl and then weed it with a little weeding tool and then use the transfer tape to take this 
image off of the vinyl backing and then that way I can press it to my now toy box and make it look as though it was custom made for my son. He is obsessed with trucks. Anything with big tires he is all over it and a lot of times they don't fit in his little toy box with the lid so I wanted something that was open and really durable to help um, stay in good shape for a long period of time since he is kind of rough on his toys as well as his storage box. He really loved it when we revealed it to him. I'm so glad. Come and see. There's a monster. There's a monster truck. Okay, let's put your trucks away. Wow. Look, it's for your monster trucks. Now that we know he loved his custom project, it's time to do a project for mom. I'm doing this lamp in a navy blue finish, and I did like the look of it before, as I said, but I just am obsessed with navy blue, obviously. It's such a classic, timeless color, and when you look online, the cost of these just like high-end navy blue and gold lamps, it's like $100 or more for some nice ones, and the size of the one that I bought from the thrift store. And I'm just going to dupe it and make it myself with my own style, and in that way, it's more custom to me and feels a little more special. It's not just like what everybody else has. But I used Rub and Buff to highlight the details that were on the shape of this. It kind of makes it look even more like a ginger jar. And I'm doing this for a fraction of the price compared to the ones that you saw on Overstock.com and Wayfair that I just showed you. I'm going to be pairing this lamp with this cute little tray. Like I said, it's made of kind of a paper mache material, so it does have a texture to it, which I thought would kind of mimic gold leaf. So I decided to spray paint this in gold. This is the easiest project I've ever done. All I did was spray paint it. Although after the first coat of spray paint, you could see some circles on here, like water, water rings. So I just went over it with the product that I use all the time, which is shellac, and the shellac helped to calm down those water rings. And then I went over again with another gold layer of paint, and it looked beautiful. I was feeling pretty curious about what it would cost me to go out and buy a gold tray that had this similar like antique finish to it and I found some online that were the Threshold brand at Target that were going for $35 and it was kind of weird because that same exact one was selling on Mercari for $50 so I don't know why that is. <laughs> anyway, I thought that it would pair really nicely with this lamp and it would be a great place to set your mail. I still had that china that I showed you in the beginning that was from England and I couldn't find a purpose for it yet. I knew I wanted it, but I didn't know the purpose until now. I think that this would work really well to hold my keys in. So I'm going to use one of these smaller bowls to hold my keys on that golden tray and the rest of them I will just add to my collection of china. But I did look up the brand and they are not super valuable unfortunately but wait till the end because that watercolor painting is pretty valuable and I'll show you just exactly how much that watercolor painting is worth more towards the end of this video but it's really like 10 to 20 dollars a piece for replacements of this china set although it is still cool that is from England so either way I'm going to keep it and I think they're pretty and it's going to work out really well to hold my keys and my mail here on this tray. The next project I'm going to work on are these plates that I picked up. I'm going to do one of them in the navy blue and do the other one in its plain white. For this navy blue one, I'm going to do some white vinyl on there and do a design that is a bit like Dutch or Scandinavian. I did my Ancestry DNA a long time ago and they keep updating it and when they update it, it gets way more accurate as to what my research has shown me for my actual like family lineage and I am very German <laughs> and I guess I should say Prussian because they were from Prussia at the time which doesn't exist anymore but I am also Swedish and I love all this Scandinavian style patterns so I wanted to do a Scandinavian style pattern on one of the dishes and for the other dish since it is white I'm going to do the inversion of it and use some blue permanent vinyl on there to do a chinoiserie style 
I wanted to do something with birds on it, so I searched the design space images for really cute bird images and a little cute like um, vine circle to go around the bird. For my next project, I'm going to be working on creating a monogram on the pocket of that L.L. Bean shirt that I got from Goodwill for about five bucks. Like I showed you before, those things sell for like $40, $50 just for the shirt. And there's another website that I found called Marley Lily, which I've actually bought from before on their clearance times when they have like really good sales. But their normal prices on these type of shirts never really change. And those are around $50 too. So I'm getting that look for such a huge fraction of the price. And it's custom. It makes me feel special because it's got my initials on it. I'm using the Smart Iron-On again, so I don't need to use that sticky mat. And I'm just going to cut off the piece that has my initials on it and weed it and then use the heat press to attach it to the shirt. Something you might not know about monograms is that your last name initial should be the biggest one in the center. And then your first initial should be first and your middle initial should be last. So in that order, it should go first initial, big last initial, and then again, little middle initial. That is how they're supposed to go. I know it looks kind of weird if you don't know that because then it would be looking like the letters were in the wrong order, but the biggest initial should always be your last name initial. The heat press makes this so easy. I just have to put the timer on and the heat press uh, app will tell you exactly how long to do it for whatever you're putting it on. And then you just follow the instructions as it's telling you them and you're done. You, you just wait till that little thing's cooled off and you can peel it right off. It is so easy. Look at how cute. And you know, I probably wouldn't have been able to order this in a gold sparkly font anyways, <laughs> even if I wanted to order it off of that website in the first place. Now the only thing left is this painting, and I don't know exactly what I want to do with the frame. And I believe I did find the artist who painted it. And um, You can pause right here if you want to read a little bit about how she became a painter. I thought it was really cool. She talks about how she was in a very busy work life and then stopped everything to become a painter. And I feel so lucky to have found a piece of hers. Here's some more examples of the pieces that she's currently selling and what they're selling for. So I do have quite a valuable painting here and it makes me want to start prospecting for more paintings at thrift stores. In the comment section down below, let me know, should I paint this or leave it as is? I already showed you that it is worth probably several hundred dollars at least purchased from the artist. I'm not sure how valuation changes after it's been bought and then sold again, but I don't know. The frame does need some work. It's pretty scratched up. And I feel like whoever bought it probably just bought the painting and then framed it themselves. So, hmm. let me know what you think I should do. Also, it's going to be going in the house, the same house I have, which has all of that navy blue. And so I thought this would be a really nice pop of color to contrast against all my navy things and my blue and white stuff. So keep that in mind with your ideas for the frame. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.